This is the latest edition of Bold Calling, that is Orem's webinar series. Uh, we titled this one a little bit playfully, When Will AI Take My Sales Job? Uh, we're going to dive into the good, the bad, the ugly when it comes to AI. We're going to talk about some of the tools that we love, some of the ones we maybe don't love so much, and then um, get down to brass tacks and really understand if and when we're all going to be out of a job. So listen, if we can't have fun while we're all slightly nervous, what can we do? Uh, first things first, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. G, we will start with you because you have uh, graced us with your presence from halfway around the world, from at least where Colin and I are. So I'll let you introduce yourself and, and all the good things that you do. And then uh, Colin, you can go next. Sure. Happy to do that. Uh, uh, thanks, Adam. So I'm uh, my full name is Guillaume Command, but Everybody calls me G, so let's roll with G. And um, I've been doing marketing for the past 20-something uh, years, stopped counting, uh, and held multiple you know, um, VP growth roles at great companies like uh, Segment, um, Gorgeous, Drift, uh, been an advisor at Ramp on the East Coast, uh, more recently with uh, Reddit. So like all across the board, um, really in, like, in scale-ups. And these days, I lead, an, I'd say, a, a collective of uh, VPs and CMOs that's called the Hyper Growth Partners, where we try to help founders and, I'd say, leading go-to-market teams to accelerate, go faster. And by nature of that, we just see a lot of what's going on in different sales and marketing orgs. Um, so, yeah, happy to share what, what we see. Beautiful. Thank you so much. All right, Colin, I'll pass it over to you. Well, I'm, I'm so excited to be here, folks, and to have G here. G is truly a real G uh, in this space. He's one of the, the smartest uh, operators I, I've ever met and, and just so so much fun. Every time I speak with G, I walk away inspired. I'm already inspired just, just being in the room with the virtual room with him here. So uh, really excited for, for this session. Adam, thank you for uh, orchestrating this uh, for, for our community and audience. And G, thanks, thank you for being here. I'm Colin Spector, VP of Sales for Aurum. Uh, I've been the, the VP of Sales really from the bootstrap days uh, just over four years ago till today, where we're a Series B plus uh, company and, and growing and scaling. Um, so uh, really an early stage builder. For those who don't know, Aurum is an AI live conversation platform. It's the smartest way to make a phone call today for you sellers out there. So uh, excited to share more, more of that as, as we progress here, but uh, really looking forward to this conversation. I think everybody, as you alluded to, Adam, is you know questioning like what, what aspects is AI going to replace in my job? Is it going to totally take my job? Um, uh, should I be thinking about what industries I'm focused on, career? Um, how do I enable myself to make sure that I am really uh, bulletproof or, or reduce my risk in this environment with AI? So we're excited to to get in here today, Adam. Uh, thanks, thanks for kicking us off here. Yeah, absolutely. And I will briefly introduce myself. My name is Adam Sokol. I uh, run content here at Orum. So if you've joined webinars in the past, it's possible you've seen my face and Collins almost, almost certainly. Um, the reason, you know, kind of the impetus for this conversation that we're, we're having today. Interestingly, I started at Orum, and then two weeks later, uh, ChatGPT came around, and I actually joked with my boss, uh, Ting Ting, our VP of marketing, I was like, are you going to get rid of me because of this robot? And, you know, we started looking at it and um, it's sort of, you know, the elephant in the room is ChatGPT seems to be everywhere. But what, what I want to start with is I want to ask you both and, and G will start with you. You know, what are some of the AI tools that you're using in your daily job to make you more efficient? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, GPT is the elephant in the room, Adam. Like that's obvious for everyone. And I'm sure everyone here has tried it. But you know what's what I find um interesting is that we all use AI infused tools in our daily lives, even though we, we might not realize it. Uh in a couple of examples, and I mean some of the companies where I worked at, but like just like I'm sure everyone here uses like Google Docs, right? And there's AI in Google Docs. It like autocompletes words, sentences for you, even even in the comments, right? Uh Gmail does the same thing. Right. And that's AI powered. So, like, are we using AI tools? If you use Docs, Google Docs, or Gmail, which is extremely likely uh, in, in the people here in this, in this webinar, you are using AI tools. Right. And then there's the less obvious ones. Like, sure, like you've implemented a chatbot, you get leads from a chatbot, very likely AI in there. Ticketing systems on the CS side, 
AI in there too, right? Call recorders, Grammarly. Like, who doesn't use Grammarly? Like, obviously, like, you know, I'm English as a half second language here, right? And it's like, I use Grammarly. Grammarly is AI infused. So like, yeah, there's AI everywhere now. We, we just don't realize it. Yeah, I I can I can attest. We're we're all cur I'm currently sharing a, a doc with the two of them, and I can see exactly how many spelling errors I've made because we've got Grammarly pulled up right right in there. Uh, Colin, how about you? What are some of the the AI tools that you're using on a daily basis? Yeah, uh, of course, o Orem is at the top of the list. Of course, right? Be being being biased, we've been an AI company since since day one, and where we where we've implemented AI is really unique. So if you make a phone call using Orem. We have an AI that will look for the person that you're trying to reach in a corporate directory, for example, and will actually spell the name for the person on your behalf and, and try and connect you. So we, we, these are just small examples of where we look to bring AI to save the salesperson time and empower them to achieve more and, and have more live conversations is our goal. So whether it's navigating corporate directory or transcribing your calls uh, uh, Orem is, is really focused on automating a lot of the, the manual kind of, kind of data entry tasks where you want to reduce risk. You want to reduce kind of uncertainty that the rep is going to actually take those administrative actions. So that, that's really a lot of where we've implemented AI on the Orem platform. Um, and then outside of Orem, of course, we use other technologies here. Um, uh, we implemented a, a territory management system called gradient works. Um, which is a, a really interesting uh, technology and it's leveraging AI and your own internal scoring, account scoring uh, mechanisms to uh, really um, in a smart dynamic way, feed your sales reps um, more accounts based upon their capacity and not just more accounts, but accounts that have the highest scoring, kind of your trending accounts. Um, so that, that's been a, a, an interesting uh, change for us in a, in a we're an account based uh, territory motion, uh, bringing uh, gradient works in. Um, we use Gong on the forecasting side, and, and so um, with my sales team, and, and when we report a forecast, um, I'm looking at uh, like three or four different forecast signals. Right, there's kind of an art and science to forecasting, and so we're using the Gong AI forecast, which looks at uh, looks at all your historical forecasting inputs and, and kind of deal progression and activity in all your deals. And then I'm also looking at our weighted ARR forecast. I'm also looking at the rep roll up, the manager roll up. And then I'm taking a kind of a combination of like AI rep reporting and uh, weighted ARR to actually report my forecast so that I add my own kind of artistic uh, judge on that. So, so that's been a, a newer place that we're adding AI. So on the forecasting side, the data entry side, whether you're you know, logging calls, transcribing calls, um, territory management was a newer one for us. And then um, uh, on, on the list building side as well. So we're leveraging uh, AI through, uh, we have, we have uh, Apollo on the data side and Zoom Info on the data side. And then within Orem, we've added a, a level of artificial intelligence. When you bring a list into Orem, we have an AI that's gonna scan your list and provide additional signaling based upon our algorithm and artificial intelligence will show you which numbers you should prioritize to call first one at a time because they have the highest propensity to uh, lead to a connection. And so you'll want to click to call those numbers in Orem with all your research, and then we'll leverage AI to bring that, that research right in front of you. So uh, those are just some of the ways we're thinking about it on the prospecting side, the forecasting side. Um, but, uh, other ways as well, excited to dive in further. Yeah. There's also, there's a, there's a couple others, uh, as a, as a content creator, I, I do use chat GPT now and then as, as an ideation tool. Uh, there's another one called perplexity, which is more like a, a research assistant version of GPT. And then I will say internally at Orem, we also have a tool called glean, which I'm a big, big fan of. And that basically looks at all of like our notion documents and all of our content we have internally that we've built out and we can get questions answered really quickly that you might not realize how often you go into Slack and say like, hey, can anybody answer like, how does pricing work for this thing? Or do we have uh, any customers in this in this, in this country, these types of questions, like Glean is able to pull those out really, really quickly, which uh, I'm a big fan of. 
Um, I do want to let everyone know we've got we got a, a question that came through in in the chat. I'm actually going to ask uh, G and Colin this right now because I love it, and I just wanted to let everyone know. Uh, feel free to to put questions in the Q and A. We'll definitely get to them as they're asked. But um, in real real time, this is an interesting question. Um, Colin Nate asked, you know, why use Apollo and Zoom info? Isn't that redundant? Um, so they they each have their own not just database but their own uh, additional features. Um, so. Uh, on the Zoom Info side, we're using um, some automated enrichment capabilities that Apollo doesn't have currently to fill in some of the blanks where Apollo won't have uh, necessarily in their database. So um, th there are many database providers out there. There are even marketplaces out there that aggregate a lot of these uh, databases into one. Um, so I, in my experience working in sales, no one database provider is perfect. So it's it's great to work with uh, a combination or to partner with one marketplace that brings in an aggregation of Apollo, Zoom Info, Lead IQ, Lucia, Upsell, you name it. There, there, there are many these days. So um, yep. yeah, we, we, yep. we, yeah. Gee, you probably plus, have- a Plus one on that. Yeah, I, I'm very well you know, uh, tuned to that. Uh, two thoughts. One is there is one vendor and you'll see my face on it uh, that aggregates a lot of other vendors that's called uh, waterfall.io like a waterfall, that's one. Uh, and and uh, two other thoughts on the um, Zoom Info and Apollo. Um, when you think of that, just take a step back, think of like how how much do how many dollars, how much you know revenue are you generating by every outreach, by every contact? And so how much are you ready to pay to get better data uh, is the question. And if you get incremental dollars by getting better data, then it's a good investment. Right? Um, are you increasing the gross margins or not? And you know, there's a trade-off somewhere. But very clearly, if you have, let's say, um, uh, just one data provider like with Zoom Info, uh, that data tends to be average, all right? Kind of stale at three months, four months refresh rates. Given that in tech, we all change, you know, roles every like eighteen to twenty-four months which means that if the data is three months old, then you have three out of 24 uh, you know, of the data sets that is incorrect. So just think about the value uh, that you generate and the importance of having correct data, and it depends. Last thought on the AI, so we can close the topic. If we all, if, if you want to experience something like Adam said, perplexity, I recommend trying out Arc Browser which is this modern, like super fancy browser. They have an app on the iPhone, which browses for you. And it is, it is a glimpse into the future where you just ask a question, it browses the top 10 search results, summarizes them, puts them into like a nifty HTML page with like all of the like reviews, comments, prices, and it's something that synthesizes for you. Um, it's not it's not perfect, but it's a very interesting glimpse into the future. Speaking of glimpses into the future, uh, we want to shift slightly into the aspects of the sales experience that are currently managed by humans. Um, I want to talk a little bit and uh, Colin, I'll let, let you start here. Like, you know, what are some of the aspects that that are currently being managed by humans or perhaps people think are being managed by humans that we foresee AI managing in the future? So. I would say, I mean, AI, I mean, we're, this is the approach we're taking at Orem, right? Is what areas do I not necessarily need my salespeople involved in, in the process? I don't need my salespeople necessarily to, um, to log the call. I should be at like, I don't need to remind them to uh, create their list. I don't, uh, and, and I think that they should have input on directionally their ICP and who they want to target and go after, but the actual manual aspects of, um, you know, putting the contacts into the sequence and, or, or putting them into a call campaign or an email campaign, um, or, uh, ensuring that they were actively listening on the call to, uh, uh, versus focusing on taking notes. Um, uh, those are basically any place that like, there's a saying in, in kind of SaaS sales where you have 50, typically 50% 50 of your base salary and you have 50% of your variable, we always say like your base salary is there for all the administrative you know, as aspects, right? It's your forecast, mm -hmm. it's your logging of activities, it's keeping your Salesforce hygiene, um, logging your Orem activities, et cetera. The AI can do that now, right? And so I, I look at AI really 
reducing the administrative burden on the sales rep and repurposing them and focusing, empowering them more on the variable side of, of their compensation. And that's giving back selling time, live conversation time. And so we're, we're constantly thinking about ways that AI can empower the salesperson to do more. And so that's directionally where we see the puck going and where we've been focusing our business on. Yeah, I think I want to take like a slight spin on that. And like Colin and I discussed like last week, some of those thoughts. And certainly for me, like this AI uh, human, uh, I'd say a relationship is a, it's a moving target. And it is a spectrum where um, I'd say some things are better done by AI or more efficiently, at least maybe at a you know, good enough and definitely cheaper price. And some aspects are still better done by a human. And that target is is moving. And what we discussed with Colin and I is that in essence, yes, it's forcing salespeople and others, but to focus on the core value of the job. So it's making salespeople better salespeople, which is great, right? He didn't get into sales to do all the admin tasks or to fill in Salesforce, or at least I hope not, right? And, and so... Um, Given that, yes, you're going to focus on the conversations, um, on the human-to-human -human relationship. And we're discussing you know, that moving target, like, you know, is AI uh, at some point going to jump into the convos? I tried, and it, it didn't work, and we cover, we're going to talk about some of that. Is it going to happen? Maybe, but then you think about it, and I'm, I'm cautious because my wife is a sales rep, so, like, I'm, I'm cautious about what I'm going to say now, but... Um, there are things which humans are uniquely good at, and it's understanding the things that are unsaid, the little like hand movements, the eyebrows, and all of that, and all of that feeling like, ooh, I feel this prospect is agreeing or disagreeing with what I'm saying, with the value that I'm putting forward, with the proposal, right? And we're extremely far from the AI being able to do like all of that and responding properly, okay? And that, that is where what we should focus on, is trying to understand the, the needs, uh, the desires, and how to make the customer a happy customer. That's it. Yeah, I love that. I mean, think, think about it. I mean, Adam, I forget what the stat is. Um, I forget if I wrote it in my notes here, but how much with the, the, the percentage of communication that is nonverbal? right? It is it far outweighs the verbal communication, right? And it's not to say like, like today, right? AI is missing some of those nuances and reading the room and, and getting that gut feeling of, you know, have you really reduced the uncertainty with each uh, stakeholder on the buying committee? And, uh, and, and that could be in a live presentation or on, on a zoom call, or, you know, even in the phone, listening to voice inflection, right? I, I think inflection is still a missing in, ingredient that's really, really accurate in, in terms of the AI. But to, you know, to G's point, right? Like that targets shifting and evolving, but um, you know, the, those nuances there, right? Really like what's not physically said, right? I think AI has gotten really great to G's point of like text trans, like voice to text transcription. I can read this text and then I know the objection I should respond with, mm -hmm. but it's missing some of the, the human the human aspects, mm -hmm. there, the vibe of it, the the energy of of that uh, conversation. And so that's why I put in the chat. Kind of depends on like who's the customer here, and like who's trying to save. Like, what are we trying to achieve? Like, if we are selling like you know fairly high ticket items, and we're trying to create a relationship, then yeah, we got we need human to human. If you're calling, you know, if you're calling AT and T because you got an issue then I, I'm sorry, mate, like you're going to quickly hit like an AI bot because that's a phone tree and that is going to be better than a phone tree for sure. And the expectations are set. Like your, your expectations of calling AT&T are already so low or United, depending on spirit on the on the worst days, are so low that, uh, yeah, like you're going to hit an AI bot and that's, that's going to be the way forward. So those conversations will move to an AI platform. Love that. Um, there was a really, I think it might just disappear. There was just a really good question, um, but I think I may have lost it. Um, somebody was basically asking before it got deleted, what are the collective you know, group's thoughts on AI as part of the conversation? Like, you know, 
the Colin mentioned it in Orem, you know, we have objection detection, there's call notes. Um, if you use a tool like Avoma to do, you know, recordings of discussions, that is one of those things where it'll, it will pull up like key points and things like that. But, um, you know, we'll get into, <laughs> D mentioned in here, if Siri and Alexa are any indication we're a long way from AI making cold calls themselves, that that is something we'll talk about a little bit later that G has a little bit of experience, but, um, you know, are there other things Colin, that you think AI supporting conversations can do like that objection handling? Like, how do you think that process is working so far right now? Do you think there's room for it to grow or do you think it's in a good place? Well, it's, it's constantly evolving, right? I, I've seen, I see new tech, new stuff coming out of like Y Combinator all the time or, or just kind of iterations on like, here, like, here's the thing with like objections and battle cards. I, I, I know this is like a hot area. Like we, we also offer a, a, a way to detect the objection and then show insight and trends and where your reps are stumbling or where they're having success overcoming certain objections. I think as the objection software gets better at kind of creating itself, like by automatically bridging your, your greatest plays into dynamically updating your battle cards, because what, what also happens is every, you know, quarter, your, your, uh, what good looks like can evolve. Right. And, and uh, a new objection might be coming up and a new a new success talk track might be coming up and the AI bridging that enablement person has to build the battle cards. And then the, the text transcription knows to cue this specific battle card when that specific text is read. That's like already here. The next step is bridging the the aggregation of dynamically enable like dynamically updating enablement itself. And that could help. uh supplement some of the work enablement does today, like manually. So I, I see that where really the puck is going on the objection side. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's so much great chatter going on in the chat and questions. I'll, I'll try to to get to some of these uh, as we go for sure. There, there's something that um, I have big thoughts on that we discussed in our, in our prep call. And it has to do with AI generated content. I mentioned at the very beginning, I am in marketing. I, you know, I, I will say one of the things I'm very proud of at Orem is marketing and sales works really, really well together, which I love. I love the relationship we have with the, the sales team under Colin. Um, but of course, part of the sales, you know, the buyer's journey is always going to be the content that you see, whether it's at the top of the funnel, all the way down through sales enablement and everything in between. Um, I want to talk about if you find if we find ourselves being more or less impressed with AI generated content, the more you see it. And the reason I ask is because, you know, when ChatGPT first came out, we were all blown away by what it appeared to be able to do. And now I feel like it's kind of settled law at the moment, at least where like it's a great starting point. You do not want to just take what it says and put it on a blog post or anything like that. Same thing with when Midjourney came out. I remember what were like the first images I saw from Midjourney. I was like, this is incredible. This is mind blowing. The latest thing now is Sora from a video standpoint, seeing these amazing videos. But now I can recognize a Midjourney image very, very quickly. And what I find myself being is less and less impressed. It's similar to like, if you watch a Marvel movie, I remember when the first Marvel movies came out with CGI, I was blown away. And now it's like, I know that it's just computer generated and I'm less and less in impressed. And so I'm curious for Colin and G, um, you know, and G, we can, we can start with you on this. Like, do you find yourself being less impressed when you're seeing AI generated content that you know is AI generated content in the buyer's journey? Like when, uh, when someone is trying to prospect you, are you more impressed when they're, when you know, things are coming from an actual human being, or are you just like, I just want the information. I don't care how it's provided. So, yes. So, Yes and no. Uh, I think impressed is not the word we should be using. Uh, I mean, if I'm thinking of the progression of technology, sure. And then, you know, we all get used to it. Fine. However, the reason why you cared for those, uh, say, text videos, uh, uh, photo, stock photography, is because you know the amount of work that it would take for a human to do those. And so you kind of compare, especially when, you, especially when you're a marketer, so you think like the blog post or like editorial content, and you, you just, and you, you feel for that, okay? And, and we did talk a bit about that before. So I want to introduce this for everyone. I think what's important for everyone here is to understand the concept of reciprocity, okay? When somebody 
I'd say, writes a great email, a really great personalized, when you're all in sales, write a great personalized email and you do the research and somebody receives that email, they will know it comes from somebody that has done the research and they will pause and think and consider response, which is why sometimes when the best AEs are, do outbound, they will get double digit response rates. I've seen response rates in the 15, 18%, okay? That's because there's reciprocity, okay? And I want you all to think about this, this quick thought experiment, okay? You all have some, um, uh, let's say, mailboxes at home. Um, you get mostly junk mail. That junk mail, you take it and you throw it in the trash without any feelings, remorse, like there's like no emotions at all going through your brain when you throw out junk mail. Okay. Now the next day you go through that pile of mail very quickly. And there's this letter, handwritten letter envelope, where there's your name scribbled on it by what seems to be like an old handwriting and somebody like licked a stamp and blam, put it on the envelope. Okay. Now think about it. How likely are you to take that envelope and put it in the trash without emotions, feelings, or remorse? I did that in the room at Saster, 400 people, not one person raised their hand, right? Because you'd be like, you would be outside of the norms of society if you did that, okay? And because you feel for responsibility, you know how much effort went in not like, writing that, like, that, that physical piece of like outreach, okay? It, it takes a lot of effort. I don't know when's the last time I wrote a letter and put it in an envelope, believe me, right? That was not for the IRS, okay? And so... So, so think about that. Now, the thing is, when you know it comes from a machine, there's no reciprocity involved because there's no effort. There's no blood, blood and sweat here. And so what we're trying to do and where the boundary is moving and where we have an issue going forward is more and more of this content will be high quality. How will the buyers react? Will they mistrust, distrust everything? Because they're just thinking like, oh, well, every, everything is AI generated. And so I'm not going to like, I'm not going to kick in my reciprocity, you know, brain here. Or will they just judge the content of the face value? And I think that it is going to split. Some people will land in the deep distrust part of the population. And those can be really hard to sell to and reach out to. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some people will judge things at face value. And just to close the loop here, Andrew wrote a great question, which, which I want to answer right now. He asked, selling to humans will always be better for a human to do, but what happens when the buyers are AI? I know a founder who's working on that. And at first I told him, like, you're crazy. Like, this is not going to happen. And he came with this very interesting example. He said, for engineering tools, engineers don't really like talking to salespeople. That's a known fact, okay? We know that. It's very hard. They would prefer buying from an AI, which could answer questions on pricing and and all that. What if that was the wedge? What if some technical buyers preferred buying from a, ch a very advanced chatbot? Now, I don't think what he's doing is, is going to work, but I think it's an interesting thought that he's working on. Very interesting, and I think... There is maybe something in the future that could resemble that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's humans who want to buy from an AI because the experience is better. So for all of the people in sales, like we got to think like, how do I make my experience better than buying from a good AI? I love that. It's the end um, of my rant. Yeah, no, gee, I, I just... You know, I I, lo I love that analogy. Um, and I think it resonates, right? It, like it strikes a chord because... You, you you get like so much spam, right? Like, and, and whether it's in your, your email inbox or in your physical mailbox, that it gets harder to cut through the noise. And so thinking about ways you can cut through the noise and, you know, there, there probably are, I actually, I have seen uh, some companies that do kind of like handwritten, you know, uh, direct mail, like it's really popular in real estate and in insurance. And, and maybe we'll see more of that in, in the, the B2B sales world as well. But um, and then it get and then if that gets flooded, it gets to a point where how do I distinguish, you know, machine versus human? And then you think about the human psychology of law of reciprocity. I mean, I'm just reflecting on on your 
your perspective here because it resonates so well with me. It's like you really appreciate when somebody put the effort in to uh, get even get to you on a on a cold call, right? Like if they get mm -hmm. to you on a cold call, you know, they had to maybe bypass your executive assistant. They had to find you in the directory or they had to go and look up your mobile number or purchase a marketplace that had your mobile number and validate it and, and then uh, catch you at the right moment. And if they catch you at the right moment, the, fir the first thing I teach my salespeople is you must humanize yourself the second you get into a live conversation. Reduce uncertainty on, on the fact that you are a human. Because I think what I, what I find myself doing, anytime I pick the phone up or anytime I connect with someone on LinkedIn too, by the way, I'm like, is this a human or an AI? Mm -hmm. And the sooner, the sooner you can reduce uncertainty and anxiety on, on who you are and what you're about and that, Hey, I'm a real human. And, uh, uh, there's, there's a law of reciprocity there that the, the prospective customer experiences, at least I'm in that camp, certainly G and, and I will give the salesperson my time, at least to hear the intro and pitch and, and all that. And so I, I think it, it's a great, a great perspective and certainly one that, that I also, uh, I'm seeing here. So, yeah, I, I, and it might be because we work at Orem and obviously we are selling a, a sales platform, but I absolutely am more inclined when I get a cold call and I answer it. If it's like someone directly, I can tell they're a human being. I'm absolutely more inclined to be like, all right, you've asked me for 27 seconds, whatever your opener is, go ahead. Let's, let's actually hear. I'm just delighted to talk to you, you know, to a real human being. Uh, we're going to, we're going to let G talk about some of the worst examples of AI that he's ever experienced so far in just a moment. But somebody had a question. Uh, Omar, I wanted to, to go back to this and just get your guys' thoughts. I, they said, as a company that works with a lot of startups and SMEs, what would you say are the three key AI tools you would recommend for them to start out with? Uh, I'll let, let you two kind of chime in. I think it also depends on the space that they're in. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I have a couple of businesses. I would call them all like fairly small businesses. I'm like a small business owner. And I'm also an investor, which means that I receive a lot of legal docs. And I have found, honestly, a GPT plus subscription. So I can just upload the 200 pages of like legal docs for like a round where I have equity that I'm not involved to know like, what am I signing? is great because when you, you invest like five or ten thousand dollars in your friend's company and like you're not going to pay like two three thousand dollars every time for your legal counsel to look into the docs it's, it's not worth it and so you have the before i was just signing blindly or just like you know paying the counsel and now i can have like a pretty good tool like summarize in a couple of minutes like what am i what am, what am i about to agree so that that's that for me as a small business owner like replacing basic, let's say, legal and financial counsel on everyday questions is great. Mm -hmm. And and honestly, AI tools are fantastic at summarizing text. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I would add one for, again, from a, from a marketing side of things. Um, this might be a little bit slightly different than the, the companies you're working with, but there's a tool called uh, Opus Clips that I really, really like. Uh, and if you, if these companies that you're working with basically don't have uh, a marketing arm, but they want to do things like what we're doing right now, like webinars or your, your recording calls, Opus Clips, Opus Clips takes those and can turn them into short form content, um, which again, it's going to depend entirely on what they're trying to sell, what they're trying to grow, what they're trying to do. But if you have uh, target audiences that are using things like uh, LinkedIn, for, you know, LinkedIn video or TikTok or YouTube shorts, things like that. Opus Clips will take that what will essentially be, you know, this 45, 55 minute video and it'll pull like 25 clips from a form from this using AI and it will rate them for you. So it'll basically say like these ones have a great hook. These ones are really likely to generate a lot of interest. So that's a nice way to increase brand yeah. awareness, increase brand engagement. Yeah. In the video space, I'm an investor, but I'm also a very big user of grain.com, which uh, kind of competes with Gong. Uh, but is really good because like, again, like as a, uh, as somebody who's not directly in sales, I'm still on zoom six to eight hours a day. All right. And all my calls are recorded and being able to have like a knowledge base and being able to go back and be like, when's the last time I talked to Colin, what did we say? 
and being able to query that knowledge base, there's no way I, I would be able to, to remember. And this makes, this in connection with a CRM, uh, makes my life so much easier and being able to jump into a call with just a couple of minutes of prep before I just go back to my knowledge was like, oh yes, now I know exactly about Colin and his life and what questions to ask and where he was on vacation and stuff like that. And I have this like icebreaker for non-sales calls, which is fantastic. Selfishly, yeah. let's also just throw in Orum. If they, if these organizations you're using, you're you're talking with, you know, are trying to do outbound or inbound or you know, yeah, grow their, their sales ICT. jobs, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Colin. No, no, I I love it. No, gee, that's that's great. Like, I think yeah, meeting prep and like if it, if it's really and I haven't I haven't seen the the way grain kind of grain kind of uh, shows up, but I can imagine you're not having to log into Salesforce and scroll through all your custom fields. It probably shows up in a very synthesized way right before the meeting, and you've got your your, your bullet points there. And it reminded me actually there was an early. A company that I would call very early to AI called Crystal Nose that I thought at the time mm, was very yes. compelling, where it, it will look at someone's social media, their like their LinkedIn and other social media, and then give you a quick kind of summary on who they are, what they're about, their kind of North Star, and some kind of engaging topics you might want to uh, lead in with or stay away from potentially as well. Like it might even find, you know certain affiliations or something that, Hey, like don't, don't stay away from these topics, focus on these topics. So any kind of edge on prep work, I think is super helpful. That, um, okay. So one of the impetuses for this whole discussion was G telling Colin and I about some pretty rough, uh, AI voice generated experiences you've had. Can you kind of walk us through the, the ones that you, yeah. you remember and, and what, what you did not enjoy about them. Yeah. I'm the uh, I'm the true like early adopter. Like I'm in that like 1% of 10% of folks who will just like try out new tech because I, I like it. And so I try out new stuff like all the time. It's also part of my job. And so I tried a few of those uh, AI voice agents, AI SDRs, um, uh, trying to book uh, meetings that didn't work. So then we downsized the goal to just try and get the uh, phone number of the uh, of the business owner, right? And so we're trying to sell an uh, HR slash payroll um, software to like local businesses, restaurants, hotels, and whatnot. Um, out of 421 calls, we got a 0% success rate. Not one call was successful. And so we listened to all the calls. We listened to all, like not all, but most of the calls. And they're terrible. They're, they're absolutely, the experience is terrible. Like it doesn't understand the uh, phone tree. It doesn't understand the, um, the, the, you know, the little music at the beginning before somebody picks up. It doesn't understand the pauses. It just blurts out. It just goes bananas on the prompt. Like mm. it was like brutal. Um, yeah. Zero out of 421. And what's funny is that the, uh, the software on LinkedIn claims that they can have a 20 to 30 minute, like, live convo uh and yeah like it's just not there yet and so mm -hmm. i really think that for cold calling and as well as for selling basically anytime you're trying to you're asking for some something and you're asking for some effort for some time for some concentration from a prospect yeah it's not there mm -hmm. and as i said like flip side if you know if the customer is the one who's who needs uh, something like you know United or Spirit or whatnot, then the the, the math changes. Yeah, you, you nailed the G. I mean, I'm seeing seeing the same thing. And actually, I'll, most of the examples that that we see, like the live demos of, and this makes sense. It's like, what's the next edge against customer support? Well, it's order taking, right? It's like just help me process this order. I mean, if you walk into most fast food restaurants these days. If, if you, you know, stop at a McDonald's or a Taco Bell, they have robots now taking your order, right? It, it, at least the ones I've seen in, in California and New York. And, and so for the AI live conversation bots, like on the phone, we're seeing that more so with like cart abandonment seem to be more of the demos. Like, I don't know if you've seen some of these where I think there's one called like Air. They, like the person like had left an item in their cart. The AI called them and said, hey, why didn't you click checkout? And, and 
wound up like closing the sale in the live demo, right? So that might be the next edge to customer support where we're seeing AI have success. I don't know. It was a, it was a demo. So I don't know how the success rate of that actually working in practice, but uh, you know, I, here, here's like kind of my tie in of all this together. There's like this classic quote, and I think it rings true more today than, than ever before, but it, it says 85% of the reason you get a job, keep the job and move ahead in that job has to do with your people skills and your people knowledge, right? It's your people skills and people knowledge that propel you. That's the reason you get your job, keep your job and excel in that job. And I think that that percentage is only going to increase uh, and, and so when we're thinking about, well, AI take my sales job, I just, I'm reminded of that, of that quote. And I think it's all the more reason why we need to get back to upskilling our interpersonal, um, efforts and skills and, um, and, and stay sharp with, with what we're best at. And that's being human and authentic and cutting through the noise and, and relating to others and evangelizing new products, inventions, and ideas. And that's where salespeople have lasted through the centuries is, you know, every new invention has always taken a salesperson to bring it to market, to prove it, to reduce uncertainty. So that's, that's my kind of bow on it there. Yeah. Um, which this, this is a nice place to kind of, there's, there's one more question in the Q and A that kind of brings us to the last question that I wanted to ask as well. So Andrew asked what AI capabilities will be stepping stones to autonomous AI sales agents. This is just anecdotally, my thought, I honestly do think a lot of the stuff that, that we're doing in Orm could, in, in theory, like a lot of the objection detection, you know, call recordings, um, you know, just the AI being able to watch the, the the transcript back and forth of seeing how a rep responds to an objection, seeing how they do the negotiation, how they, you know, I, the more data that goes into artificial intelligence, that is how it gains the intelligence as it does. So like, to me, those are the things that in theory could ultimately lead to AI sales agents. But to kind of get to the last question that I want to ask both of you and, and Colin, you started sort of talking about evangelists. And so I'm, I'm going to start this with you. Like what aspects of the sales cycle do you expect will always be human centric? Or to answer the question that we started this whole webinar with, do you think AI will eventually replace the entire sales process? So I, I don't think AI will replace the the seller and buyer experience. I think it will, and it, it already is in kind of low end order taking sides of the market. I think we're like I'm I'm big on the evangelist sale. Like I'm a builder. I evangelize new products, new services, things that are category creators, like like Orem, right? Nothing like this existed prior to us. And 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 that's that's been my my career. And I look back at just all the anecdotes throughout our history, right? Even Thomas Edison, when he invented the light bulb, he had to go and sell that idea. He had to go provide free pilots in office buildings and houses, a technical validation you know, process to really convince people this was a good thing before anybody took them seriously. Um, and so there are just countless, any new innovation or, or ideas. So I think in the evangelist aspect of sales motions, um, and bringing new ideas to market, evangelizing, that that still remains true. And humans need to be able to trust other humans. Would you trust an AI with a completely novel invention or product? Maybe. But I, I see, especially higher ticket items, transformational items, cultural transformation initiatives, there's that human understanding and human evangelist connection that uh, is unique to humans. I think I want to, I just want to answer quickly, like Andrew's question with a quite of a spin. I think AI will win when it does the things we're failing at. And I mean, I being a marketer here along, you know, with uh, Adam and calling a sales folk, like the one thing we're all failing at as an organization time and time again is getting marketers and salespeople to work together like time and time again. I can't tell you how often I jump into an organization and leads are being created from very different campaigns, campaign sources with context, and the salespeople do not have or do not use the context of the acquisition and what was the offer, what was promised, and they have to do the whole discovery again. Okay, AI will not mess that up because it is the easiest thing ever to store that in a single database source of truth and leverage that and say, 
hey, Colin, like, it was great that you came to a booth at the event, like, last week. Like, how was your meeting with, like, Adam? Like, so easy. And we, as organizations, fail that time and time again. And so I think we've got to set, we, you're asking, like, what's a stepping stone? I want to say we've got to step up our game on that cross-team collaboration and using the knowledge that's already present better. That is That is for sure. Now, to answer like the last question, like, is it going to take the sales job? Depends. Some, like if you're an SDR and you add and your your sole job is like sending emails which basically have a county link, yeah, like that that's done. Like there's there's no value here, right? Um if your job is having conversations and trying to understand the real pain and who's the um who's the buyer and who can be the champion. Yeah, you have a job for a while, uh, for a long while, and and so like that's you know, it, it's it's a moving target, uh, but I do think that it's going to push salespeople to be better at sales and better at handling their prospects, and I think that's great. I'm I'm a buyer. I want to be on on this on that side of history of like you know having better sales conversations as a buyer. Um, to, to close, I'm going to, I'm going to steal a quote that G said actually in our prep meeting that I wrote down. It was so good. I wrote it down. I didn't even tell you in the moment you said pure human connection is always going to be a key differentiator. And I love that because I do think to both of your points, yes, AI will take some of those jobs 100%, but the, if you are able to make those genuine human connections, um, I, I think that's always going to matter. We had a, a one of the very large <laughs> AI has no riz. That's really funny, D. Uh, one of our uh, largest customers recently did a customer story with us, and the the president of the company said, "You purchase from people you trust." And you know, I I'm sure at some point people will learn to trust AI a little bit more. But that human connection is how you build that trust, how you build those relationships, which is why we believe so strongly in the phone here at Orm because it is a little bit easier to to build that trust. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. The chat was fantastic. This was really, really in depth and thorough. I you know, appreciated everyone being so involved. G, Colin, thank you both uh, for your time. We will send a follow-up email to everyone who attended so that you guys can send this to any of your colleagues. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank Thanks you all. Everyone. Bye. Thank you, G. Thank you, Adam.